All right, well, hello there, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Hope everybody's doing well out there. This is a Arches sketchbook. A bit of a unicorn. I don't, they don't make these anymore. It's one of their field books that they used to make. Uh, the only way of getting this now is to make one yourself, which you can do if you have like a spiral binder. I've got one, but most of the time I just don't feel like going to the trouble. Anyway, uh, we're going to be painting again with my 10 color set, the Mind of Water Color 10 color set from M. Graham. Very proud of this set. This has been several years in the making. Here's the colors though I'm going to use, only three. Dioxazine Purple, Purell Scarlet, and Thalo Green Blue Shade. They're all very brilliant colors. Uh, this I'm going to start out with this brush here. It's a three quarter inch Princeton Neptune. And we're going to do some of our little spatter spray. Uh, just do kind of a little spontaneous landscape. But I'm going to do something different. I'm going to actually detail it. I'm going to do that with watercolor pencil. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the process. Uh, I've done that in many other videos. I want to talk about something else. But uh, just to set the tone here. I'm painting upside down. So what you see down at the bottom is actually going to be the top. And you'll see that in a few minutes. And I just want to make a note about the colors. All these are very brilliant colors, but they combine uh, to sort of neutralize each other in some interesting ways. So by the time you're done, you end up with some really pretty dusty purples and some browns and some muted greens. And you'll see me use various spray bottles. I like the, the trigger sprayer for spatter, and then I'll use a mister uh, to soften areas, stuff like that. So... Anyway, on with that painting process. What I wanted to talk about today is motivation and what has become for me the most motivating thing about producing art or doing anything artistically related at all. And I'll be honest with you, I never saw this coming. You know, the, when I started my career uh, as an artist and started uh, trying to become a professional designer and illustrator, there are all kinds of motivations. I, I, I did love learning, and I loved seeing my skill develop. I loved the processes. What I thought would be motivating in the years going forward turned out not to be very motivating at all. Like, you know, recognition, uh, being successful, and selling my art, whether it be to commercial clients or to uh, galleries for prints or whatever. I'm not saying those things aren't motivating. They are. But they didn't become the primary motivator for me. They just, you know, in the end, uh, there wasn't a lot of satisfaction to be gained from those things to make me better, to make me really better. What really became and is now in my later years, the prime motivator for me is discovery. I just live for discovery. And I'm not saying this has to be everybody's motivation, but let me tell you something, and this is why I wanted to make this video today. It is a powerful, powerful one. And it's a motivator because it's exciting, but it's also skill developing. And I don't care what kind of painter or drafts person or can be anything, calligrapher, potter, sculptor, crafter. I don't care what kind of artisan you are. Discovery is highly, highly motivating and highly, highly effective in developing your skills. And I have come to use the word discovery in place of practice. Okay, we all know what practice is. It's do it over and over till you get it right. In art, I have come to replace that with discovery. And it involves practice. It might, but it involves a bunch of other things. I've just become addicted to it, and it's really surprised me. I think one of the things that really surprised me is the little things. The discovery of the little things. Um, the things that I had not thought would make a big difference. I mean, it could be anything. It could be uh, how you hold your pencil, the way you lay down your lines or your brush strokes, the way colors combine. The way a medium acts or reacts in a particular situation. You know, I think one of the other things that surprised me and has become real important to me, very, very 
passionately motivating is that technique, which I thought was just something you learn then you get on with the creativity, technique generates creativity. I see so many young artists that just, they, they're dismissive of certain things. Now, I understand style and preferences, and not every artist is going to do everything, every medium. But be careful about being dismissive, because being dismissive of a technique or learning a particular thing can just pay great dividends. I've said this before, I've said it often actually, and I even wrote a blog post about it. I don't understand the dichotomy, the argument between realism, even photorealism, and loose or abstract painting. The two should be best bedfellows. I mean, there should not be any <laughs> arguments there. The, the loose painter or the person that wants to be abstract just doesn't understand how learning to render something realistically can pay great dividends in your abstraction and in your loose painting. And the opposite is true. The realist painter, the painter that wants to paint photorealistically, just doesn't understand how being loose and abstract can pay great dividends in how you do your art and your expression. There should not be this kind of divide. Oh, I want to be loose. Oh, I want to be tight. Oh, but I really enjoy that. And you can lean one way or another. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I do. But they augment each other. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off track. What I really wanted to talk about was discovery and how everything matters. Um, every technique you practice, um, every study that you do, every master that you try to emulate pays dividends. And if you just approach it as there are discoveries to be had that will revolutionize your art, you're just in for a lot of excitement. Falling into ruts is the worst thing you can do. To look outside yourself, emulate other artists, at least initially, to kind of assimilate their techniques for yourself. You know, even uh, book knowledge. You know, you look at a book on watercolor techniques and you say, oh, there's one I hadn't thought of. I really like that one. I should use that. Make sure you do. Make sure you try it. Make sure you try it two or three different ways. Assimilate that experience for yourself. There's discovery there that you don't get from the book. The book may open the door. So getting back to the video for just a minute, I'm going to open up my Albrecht Durer watercolor pencil super duper wood box set. <laughs> yeah, the angels sing practically every time I open this thing. It's just wonderful. I'm going to pick out about five or six colors that go with the color scheme. And this is what I'm going to use to detail with. So that's what you'll see going forward. Anyway, today's video was a product of discovery. Just wanted to see, uh, try some different things. I've done some of this before, but, you know, I'm just kind of revisiting how uh, doing the detailing in line with uh, watercolor pencil might differ a little bit or might produce a slightly different look from doing it with paint and brush. And I love getting these pencils out anyway. So it was a good excuse, right? But back to what I was saying, assimilate knowledge for yourself. Don't just uh, let someone tell you or a book tell you uh, this is how it's done and you file that away because you'll make discoveries in the process or it will sink in in ways that it wouldn't have just being told or read. So try it, try it, try it. Experimentation. I mean, discovery is uh, not just practice. It's about experimentation. It's about what ifs. What if scenarios. As I've already mentioned, it's about new combinations. Either a combination of a type of a line or a type of a wash or brush stroke. It's trying those things and doing mental note taking. It's one of the reasons I do so many spontaneous paintings. I have learned, I have let watercolor teach me in a lot of ways, in a lot of respects. Learned so much by doing that and the discovery has just been very exciting. And again, as I've mentioned, it's the little things. What if I tried this color instead of the traditional color for making whatever subject it is? What if I added line in this way? What if I put line on top of my wash? What if I 
made the lines prominent in one part and disappear in another. Um, my last video was about liquid charcoal. That was a very satisfying episode for me, a very satisfying painting. Wasn't really sure how it would turn out. Didn't have to look like a pencil drawing, but it's something I wanted to try. And I've never tried liquid charcoal. Turns out it's really just black watercolor. It didn't act like any kind of charcoal, really. But those are things I learned. You know, people ask me questions because I've discovered the answers to a lot of this stuff on my own. That's what you need to do. But more than that, it's like this super motivator. Super motivator. I see a lot of art forums talk about motivation. And to me, it's been the best motivator I know. What can I discover? Even if I have 15 minutes, what can I go out and discover about this medium or another medium? I discovered something really kind of interesting in this uh, painting. And that was white. A lot of times on these dark spontaneous paintings I'll use white prismacolor because it's very opaque and very white and shows up. It's not water soluble but I put it as a final detail. The white watercolor pencil in the Albert Durer line is not as opaque, not as white, doesn't show up as well. Um, you can put it down fairly thick and heavy almost like a, a burnishing layer and then uh, activate it and you'll get sort of a, a milky haze and you can use that in some cases. I did find out though that the the watercolor, the white watercolor pencil, the auberteurs will burnish the white prismacolor. If you're a colored pencil artist you know what burnishing means. Just kind of smashes it all down and levels it. And then if you activate it, of course it won't do anything to the prismacolor but all of the the white watercolor pencil just kind of soaks in and fills in. It was kind of an <laughs> interesting thing. And you, and that seems like a little thing. But it's a technique I'm going to use, I think, probably over and over and over again. Anyway, everything about this spontaneous piece today was primarily um, an experiment. I was using very brilliant colored pencils, so watercolor pencils. They were too brilliant, really, f to match these colors. So I found the best way to gray them. Oh, and by the way, here's where I'm talking about. That's the that's a prism color, white prism color. It does pretty nice details over a uh, darker watercolor. That's what I tend to use. So I'm just kind of adding those to enhance my edges and give myself a little bit uh, more detail and contrast in places. But right here, I use the Albert Durer white watercolor pencil. And I just put it down as heavy as it would possibly go, burnished it, and then activated it, and it was it made a nice little milky white uh, haze back there, and that's all I needed. And then I went back over the Prismacolor. I don't think it's on video, and kind of burnished it down with the watercolor pencil, and it worked. Anyway, as I was mentioning, I was using some fairly brilliantly colored watercolor pencils here, almost too bright. They didn't match these more grade tones, so I was layering them with gray watercolor pencil and had a warm gray and a cool gray and uh, did exactly what I needed it to do. And I could layer in different strengths and match the tonality, the intensity of the painting. So we're gonna finish it off. I just felt like I needed to draw a border. That's a, a gray Prismacolor just because that lower left corner was so kind of empty and it felt like it needed something to frame it up after I removed the tape. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. hope my little pep talk gave you something to think about. Some of the details. Really pleased with how this turned out. And I thank everybody for watching. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support. Very important for me. Thank you. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.